Welcome. Welcome to Bold Women Lawyers Spotlight Interview. I hope uh, everybody is ready for a great conversation today because that's what we're going to have with Trisha Livermore. Um, she is a really fascinating uh, person. I've had the opportunity to talk to her quite a bit before we, we were able to get scheduled for this interview. I know you are going to learn a lot. You will feel so much better when we're finished with this conversation about the things that you need to do to take care of yourself. So I want to get right to it. But let, before I do, let me tell you a little bit about Trisha. She is a heart-centered mindset coach that helps women find the calm in the chaos of everyday life by overcoming internal judgments. Yes, ladies, we all do that by calming the nervous system and positively impacting others when you put yourself first. So Trisha, welcome. I am so glad you were able to join us today. And I can't wait to hear what you have to tell us so that we can all achieve that, you know, priority of self-care. But that's my really very first question for you. You say that self-care is your first priority, but why do you say that? Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction, Sharon. I really appreciate that. You know, I, I ended a corporate career in burnout um, and mm -hmm. I did not put myself first. I was putting my work first. I was putting my marriage first. I was putting family first. And that's really what led to burnout. And so when I learned to let go of the guilt and shame for putting myself first, I was able to, you know, heal and really learn how to regulate my emotions in a way that no matter what, what life threw at me, I could handle them, right? So, you know, we often get triggered with a variety of different things and and then you start noticing little, little tiny things start bothering you more and more and more and more. And the more you can really calm your nervous system throughout your day, you have that emotional regulation to manage pretty much anything that comes to you. So when you, when you fill your cup, when you're energized, um, you then have this beautiful ripple effect out in the world on others, which helps them calm down. So um, I don't know how much you know about neuroscience, but, you know, we live in this world of mirror neurons. So, you know, when you walk into a room and I'm sure we've all done this, you walk into a room, you can just feel the tension. Right. And then you, you absorb that tension into your body unless you know how to calm your nervous system. And that's really the key is 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 creating that way in which we can align to our heart center calm that nervous system, and then not letting those other tension and factors really engage with our, with our core being. And so that way, when we're in that calm state, we can radiate that out to others, even in a tense room or with, with somebody who's really upset. And just by breathing a little calmer, a little slower, it really has this beautiful impact on others around you. So for me, it's really about what is the state I want to be in on a daily basis, no matter where I'm at? So, oh, I'm so glad the, so glad you 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 said said it the way that you did because a lot of the listeners are certainly women lawyers, but many of them are litigators. And when you and that was what I did for a large part of my career. And when you said, you know, you can walk into the room and feel the tension. Well, that's, you know, many, if not most settings that litigators find themselves in. They're either in a courtroom and it's tense, or you're going into a deposition and there's opposing counsel and it's tense, or it's mediation, or it's on and on and on and on, or it's a client who's upset. And that can be true across the board. So when you're living in a career where tension is a large part of how everyone lives. How do you approach that? You know, because I, I, as you were talking, I was thinking, 
I wish I had heard this when I was actively litigating cases because I would get caught up in it. I would get caught up in the tension uh, and it doesn't serve you well. So help us understand when, you know, you know it, you know what it feels like when you feel that tension. How do you, yeah. how do you deal with it? Yes, that's a great, great question. Um, and honestly, um, I wish I would have learned these techniques back in my corporate days as well. Um, I didn't learn them until after the fact. And the key here is our breathing is our life force. And when we're in that tense room, we have this really shallow breath, right? We get anxious, we get nervous, um, anxiety, right? And all of those feelings and emotions really release cortisol in our system, right? So all of those, yes. all of those emotions release cortisol in our system. So really if, and this, it sounds really simple, but it, the, this is really key to practice throughout your day is really breathing a little slower and deeper. So um, there's, you know, and there's a ton of different breathing techniques out there. There's, there's a, there's a variety, but I really, there's two that I really prefer is um, when you're really angry, like really elevated, a double count, which means like a four count in and a four and an eight count out or a three count in and a six count out, oh, wow. really like immediately can calm your nervous system. If you can take five of those breaths, like when you're really agitated, it will immediately calm your nervous system. The other aspect is you know, like, let's say you walk in and your client is really, really upset, really agitated, and you start breathing just a little slower and deeper, you know, like maybe four seconds in, four seconds out, just really calming your nervous system and feeling appreciation, like feeling some empathy for this person, really feeling into that and your heart center and, and just listening, right? And, and their mirror neurons, right? If you, don't, if you don't allow to get hijacked by their tension and their drama, and you create that calmness and that sense of appreciation, um, they will start mirroring you. And you don't even have to say anything. Like this is a really beautiful technique that I would really love your listeners to practice on a regular basis, just to notice when you calm your nervous system, what is the impact it's having on others? The reason for this is it's, it's called heart coherence, heart brain coherence. So when you get out of your head and you really get into your heart space and feeling that appreciation releases DHEA, which is like a vitality hormone, which mm -hmm. overcompensates the, it you know, it, it compensates for the cortisol that's being relieved released in your system. So that heart coherence um, also creates this beautiful energy field that we have um, within our within our system. And our heart radiates that out easily three feet, if not more, when you're really radiating that out, that calm and that appreciation. And that's where those mirror neurons really pick up on how you're feeling and, and making a difference to the other people in the room. Wow. That's, um, that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. And as you were speaking, you know, I could think in my head for myself of instances where a client was upset, may have been upset with me, may not have had anything to do with me or my team. They were just upset you know, the system's very difficult to work within, et cetera. And on those occasions, when I would start to become defensive, it was a disaster. And I remember just trying to catch myself and I didn't know any of these techniques and just saying to myself, don't be defensive, whatever you do. And when you said, just listen, that is so true. And when you're on the receiving end, like if you're upset about something in just, you know, trying to get customer service on the phone, for example, when the person on the other end of the phone is calm and just listens to what you have to say without reacting until you're done, it really does make a huge amount of difference. 
So I, yeah, that's great. I mean, I think we can all see that, but it's hard in the moment. It's hard in the moment. What, what would you, what would you recommend? You know, you're in the moment. It is hard. You feel that defensive kind of feeling coming up. What do you do? Yeah. You know, this is, this is really about practicing self-awareness. Um, it, it, it isn't, you know, it's something that you have to practice. And what I always suggest is, you know, throughout your day, find ways in which you can breathe a little bit slower and deeper, you know, take, you know, take three to six breaths. Like if you're walking to the restroom or in the restroom, t taking a drink of water, sitting down before you respond to an email, especially before you respond to an email, <laughs> right? Like, you know, cause you don't want to fire off something. You know, and so you maybe you write it and you like take a few breaths and you're like, eh, maybe I'll rewrite that. Um, <laughs> right. So exactly. It, it's, yeah. it really is a practice of that. And I what I like to call it is microdosing self-care. So just that that breathing a few just a little slower and a little deeper multiple times a day, as often as you can do that and really start noticing in your system. And the more you do that, the more you'll notice those triggers. You'll notice like, oh, wow, this really triggered me. Yeah. And maybe in the moment you're, you can't really think about what, it, what caused the trigger because you're in the moment. But instead of reacting to it, like you said, right, instead of mm -hmm. getting defensive, you can respond a little bit more thoughtfully, a little bit more kindly. And maybe you just put a pause, right? You just put a pause in there, some silence in between you and whoever you're working with just so that you can take that those few breaths mm -hmm. um, those all of those things are incredibly helpful to just microdose those self-care moments of just breathing it is it is truly our life force if we utilize it um, in a way that we create that inherent heart brain coherence yeah. because I'm, I'm sure you know as lawyers you can you can also understand is that when you're triggered um, and you immediately get emotional, your amyg amygdala gets hijacked and your executive functioning turns off, right? So you react, you say things you don't mean to say because you're in a really high emotional state, right? And so when you can do that pause and do the breathing, you can bring your amygdala, your executive functioning back online so that you can respond over reacting. And it, it literally takes seconds to do this. 10, 15 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds. I mean, it doesn't take a huge amount of time to just pause and breathe. Um, and the more you do that, my gosh, it, it, it changed my life. It changed my life completely. Well, it's, this is interesting because, you know, one of the questions I have for you is how do you define self-care? Because I think so frequently people take it as a, with something of a negative connotation, you're it's you or it's self pampering. You're getting a massage. You're getting a mani pedi. You're you know taking a day off. Something along those lines. And yet, what you're describing is really very different from that. So, so tell me, you know, what how you do define self care? Yeah, I love that you distinguish self pampering different than self care because self pampering. It feels like it, it involves money, right? It involves right. You, know, you. You go do and you, you do you go out and you do something for yourself that requires money. And for me, self care is it has nothing to do with money. It has um, you know meditation, right? So a lot of people I know, a lot of hyper achievers and people who are hyper rational say I can't meditate. I can't stop thinking. But here's the thing about your brain is just like a car you have to stop for fuel. You, you can't run it on empty. You can't, you can't keep going. You have to maintain your body just as well as you're maintaining your car, right? So you have to take those down times. You have to, whether it's meditation or mindfulness or getting out in nature, nature is huge, mm -hmm. huge way to really revitalize and restore yourself. Doing something fun, whatever that is, playing games with people or watching something funny on TikTok, 
like adding humor to, you know, your day, like those, those are the things that are self care, you know, and then obviously the most obvious ones, drink lots of water, get, get exercise, do exercise you enjoy doing, like really find something you really enjoy doing. Um, be creative, right? Find a creative outlet. I started painting and, and I don't know if you can see the, the paintings on my hutch. Um, I painted those because I just wanted to. Can, you, can we see them? I don't think we can see them. Can you see them there? Oh yeah, see them. There. Oh, they're, that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And I just picked up, you know, I just one day I just decided I'm going to paint. I went and bought some acrylic paints and some canvas and paint brushes, cheap stuff, right? And just was yeah. like, oh, let me just start putting some paint on a canvas and see what happens. And I love it. Like I love that, right? So. Those are, you know, journaling is also a really great way to let out your frustrations, just writing, just mm. writing it all down and you, then you can burn it if you want to burn it. Um, but those are the things in which for me, that self-care, what am I doing for myself that I am raising my energy, right? Because the day, your, your day-to-day can deplete your energy. What are you yeah. doing to increase your energy and fill your own cup because the more you can fill your own cup the more you can have the energy to support others so how do you do this so this is an issue that comes up a lot i you know talk to um, friends i've talked to fellow lawyers about it how do you do this without feeling guilty yeah that's a tough one um I, I remember when I was in corporate and I, I started um, doing 10 minute meditations and I would feel guilty, like, oh my gosh, I took 10 minutes out of my day. But what I started noticing for myself is I felt better. I, I, had, I received joy in those moments. Uh-huh. So really just letting go of this concept, right? We've this cultural concept that it's selfish to do things for yourself. Well, if you're if you're not harming anyone else by what you're doing for yourself, that's not selfish. That's self care. Putting yourself as a priority. It's just like the plane, right? You get on a plane. They say, put your mask on first. You you are no help to anyone else if you can't put your your you know get oxygen first. And that's really the case in our daily life. If you're not taking care of yourself first, you're not able to really have the the greatest impact on those around you. So it's, it's, it's an awareness and a letting go of this concept of guilt um, and really having a true appreciation for what you love doing and, and how it makes you feel. Like, how do you feel? How do you want to feel? And really letting go of the guilt associated with that because all you're doing is, is really um, – taking care of yourself in a way that models that for others. And then oh, that's they, an interesting point. Yeah. Right? So they start noticing, Oh, wow. Like, Hey, I noticed you're, you know, you're much more relaxed, much more calm. What are you doing? You know? And I, and on my question, my response was like, I started meditating <laughs> that, that, you know, that I just started there, yeah. um, you know, and I just slowly started adding more and more self care regimens to my daily life um and letting go of the guilt but you know modeling that for other people i think is really key in in today's chaotic world yeah and how did i'm just curious like how did your colleagues respond when they'd say oh look you're so much calmer what so much calmer than me what are you doing did they did they then or some of them at least try to pursue it further to see what you were doing or find something for themselves? Yeah, actually, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, actually, in when I was in corporate, I had a team and we we talked a lot about self-care and, and what people did for self-care. And, and I had said, I you know started meditating. And so one of the guys on my team actually said, I would, can we bring in somebody who can meditate? And I'm like, I'm sure we probably could. And so we reached out to um, you know, our wellness group and found somebody to come in and we did meditations. We started a monthly um, in the beginning and we didn't have very many people, but it was really interesting for those who actually took the break and came in for 
30 minutes or an hour, um, how much better they felt. They were like, oh my gosh, I'm like so much more relaxed, so much more calm. Um, and it, so really making it like available and, um, wow. and accepted in, in our daily lives is really key. Well, and, and what a great point, because it's not just in a business setting, it's not just self-care for you. If you have a team that you work with, it should be self-care for the team too, for those who choose to participate. And I would expect that once you get a few people participating, then other people may naturally start to gravitate into the group to say, well, look, it's accepted. Let me give it a try, see what I think. Um, but that's a great point because self-care, we usually think of ourselves. But in a, in a team environment, um, whether it's corporate, whether it's your law firm, whatever the environment might be, whether it's your family, you know, um, making, making it available and encouraging other people to participate um, is such a great idea and sends such a powerful message, I think, to the people that you're working with. The other aspect I used to do when I was in corporate that I really enjoyed was, you know, anytime I would either go up to my team members or colleagues or even in a team meeting, we would just do a, a one word check in and without any judgment, like, how are you feeling today? Like, give me a, a one word or a phrase like, you know, what's going on with you right in this moment? And, and allow, and starting first being vulnerable, like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling some tension or I've got a lot of things going on in my mind, my mind chatter. I've got some anxiety. I got some things going on at home. And I think in this day and age, like people just want to be seen, heard and acknowledged. They don't need to be given advice. They just want to be seen. And when you give them that opportunity to just to be seen and to be heard, um, and, and you do that with, everyone around you, it, it really helps break some tension and just, you know, like, hi, I, I see you. I hear you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in that, in that instance, so the one word or one phrase check-in, you know, if somebody says it's a bad day, you know, I have a lot of tension or there's a lot going on for me. Do you take it another step? Or because my tendency would be, oh, I'm so sorry. What can I do to help you? You know, or is there anything you want to talk about to try to push it further? What's the best way to handle that? Um, what I have found is thanking them for sharing that. Like, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your vulnerability. And that's all you need, right? Because yeah. you're right, because that says you're seen, you're heard. And, you know, I appreciate that you are willing to, to express that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate you sharing that with me. Like, and, and you never know where that's going to go. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it, it, it just allows people to be seen and heard in this moment. And sometimes if they need support, then they may say so, right. They may ask for support. Yeah. And depending on the relationship, you know, um, you could say, is there, is there anything I can support you with in this moment? Um, depending on, you know, what it is, but really just thanking them for mm -hmm. sharing. So, you know, some of the listeners are lawyers in solo practice, meaning they're the only lawyer in their law firm. They may be the only person. Um, they may work with some virtual assistants, but literally it may just physically, it may just be them, or they may now be working remotely with all of their team members. So um, one thing that, that comes to my mind is when you're solo it, or you are working remotely, whether you're the lawyer or you're the team member, but you're in your house day in and day out, um, how can you achieve what you've just described? I mean, would you set a daily check-in call like a Zoom or what do you think? What would work? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Um, and I can relate to that um, working from home over the last couple of years. And as even as an introvert, as an introvert, I what I realized the self awareness that I gained is as a solo entrepreneur and an introvert, I need um, physical presence with other people. And so I, I will do a lot of maybe networking calls or I'll, you know, Zoom call. Like tonight, I'm actually have a Zoom call with a friend who's in Colorado and we're going to do some painting together on Zoom. Oh, um, fun. You know, so finding ways that, you know, you know what you need to fill your cup that what energizes you. So something I just recently started is I wanted to always learn how to West Coast swing dance. So I... Oh. I, you know, so now I am doing that two, three times a week, you know, because I really needed the interaction. I needed people, a physical people interaction. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, finding something that you really would enjoy doing that puts you out with people in a physical presence because mm -hmm. it's great. Um, but, you know, I don't think we were meant to do and be alone. Right. right. So right. really kind of putting out there, you know, going to a happy hour, going to a meetup, um, whatever that happens to look and feel like for you. And, you know, maybe it's a few Zoom calls a week with, with your friends or, or, or whatever the case is. But it is really, really super important to find those things. And, and maybe it's just like, go out for a walk for 10 minutes. You know? yeah. Just take yeah. a walk real quick. You'll go out in the sun for a few minutes. Um, you know, put your feet in the ground for mm -hmm. a, a little while. So those are those self-care moments where you really just have to have a lot of self-awareness around what depletes you and then what re-energizes you and really start practicing putting those in place throughout your day and throughout your week. That's great. That is, that is wonderful, wonderful advice and great steps to follow. Now, Trisha, I know you've got, I'm going to put up your, um, your website there. So um, tell us a little bit for people who are listening that want to get in touch with you, you know, how they do that and what kind of work do you do with people? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Um, my coaching program is a seven week program. I utilize positive intelligence.com um, as a free assessment. Anybody can go there and take their saboteur assessment. It really helps me identify like what might be getting in their way. Um, it's because underneath all of our saboteurs, um, we have this judge, right? We have this inner judge, this inner critic um, that comes out all of the time. But underneath that judge and, and the saboteurs is we have this really beautiful strength. And we've somehow overutilized that strength in, in some area of our, of our life, whether we're, you know, a hyperachiever or we're stickler, a perfectionist, a controller. Um, or we just get restless. There's a variety of different saboteurs that show up depending on, you know, what happened in your early life and, you know, and what are your, just your innate strengths. So I, I work with them on identifying those things and then creating a practice. Cause that's really the key. Like you have to understand that it, they say it takes 21 days to create a new habit, but actually it takes way longer than that for most people. Often it takes 60 to 90 days to create a new habit. So when you learn how to intercept that judge, not get hijacked by it, doing the self-care, these, you know, the breathing and, and some other techniques that I, I teach on, really identifying what those things are over a seven week period of time and practicing that. Um, and then also understanding the, the, the science behind it. So I'm also um, certified in building personal resilience with HeartMath. HeartMath has some really fantastic science behind its methods and really helping to helping people build that heart brain coherency um, on a daily and regular basis. So those are the things that I, I really enjoy doing. It's helped me in my personal life significantly. And I just want to be able to help others in that same space of whether they're in burnout or wanting to avoid burnout. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. So they would just go to your um, website, soulbusinessadvisor.com and, and get in touch with you from there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Soul business advisor, S O U L businessadvisor.com. They can also find me on LinkedIn. 
Um, and if they go to my website, they can book a consulting, a just free cons um, consultation call with me. And we can just take it from there, review their, I mean, I'm happy to even review their top saboteur if they take the assessment and bring that to the conversation. And we can talk about what their underneath, what their underlying strength is. I'm happy to do that for free so that they can get to know me a little bit more and, and see if there's a, a good match. Well, that is a great offer. So I hope everybody who's listening takes Trisha up on that because uh, I think that that would be just great discovery for your, for your own self. And uh, I think that they would love, just like I have, they would love having this conversation with you and see what they can do to help themselves and how they might be able to work with you to help themselves. Mm -hmm. So Thank Trisha, you. this has been wonderful. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And uh, I know I've learned a lot. I know the listeners have learned a lot. So um, I just want to thank you and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And I just want to say to all the listeners, you know, go to soulbusinessadvisor.com and uh, book a call to talk to Trisha because I think you'd really, really get a lot out of it.